Hello, and welcome to ScreenFlow 10, now running natively on both Intel and Apple Silicon. This video will give you the fundamentals of how to create a project, capture some video, add stock footage and graphics, then edit your show to make a polished program for distribution on the streaming platform of your choice. We'll talk about basic editing techniques, video effects, titles, and more, plus how to export your project and manage your data assets afterwards. So let's get started. When you open ScreenFlow, you can start with a new recording or create a new document first. We'll select New Document, then select a document size. We'll use 1080p and a frame rate. Then click here to open the new project. Once my new project is open, the first thing I do is select Save As and give it a name and a location on my hard drive. Once you've done this, ScreenFlow can keep all of your project files organized for you. Capturing new clips from your screen, your webcam and microphone, or any other cameras or audio devices attached to your computer is easy with ScreenFlow. Go to File, Add Additional Recording, or press Shift-Command-R to open the Record Configuration window. You can also get here by clicking on the ScreenFlow Options icon on the menu bar if it's active. Here you can select the computer screens, video, and or audio elements you want to record. You can start or stop your recording with the keyboard shortcut Command-Shift-2, or just press the red record button. Here, I'm recording both my screen and my camera, along with the sound from my microphone. Pretty convenient for doing a presentation using my face and my on-screen content. Pressing Command-Shift-2 again stops the recording and puts the new elements into my library. The Media Library is where you gather all of the assets for your show. The Media tab is divided into four sub-tabs, which can be viewed either as thumbnails or as a list. There's the Media Bin for the elements you collect and create. Your iTunes Library gets its own tab. And there's a Global Library tab to store items you use frequently. And finally, the fourth tab is the optional Stock Footage Library that you can subscribe to along with ScreenFlow, which has over a million video clips you can use in your shows just by clicking on them and dragging them to the timeline. The timeline is, of course, where most of your editing takes place. With ScreenFlow, each track can carry both audio and video, or you assign a track to be just one or the other. Video elements stack from bottom to top, so the topmost element is always in front of any objects below it. Moving and trimming clips on the timeline is pretty intuitive. Just grab and move a clip or adjust the handles. To split a clip, you can select the blade tool or just park your playhead where you want to make a cut and press T. You can group clips so they travel together on your timeline, or use the nest command to nest them into a separate timeline that you can treat as a single clip. The video tab gives you access to a clip's size, position, and rotation controls. You can also control these parameters directly on the canvas using these edge handles for sizing and this center handle for Z rotation. Also on the video tab are cropping, reflection, and corner rounding for further manipulation and styling of your video elements. Color controls and filter effects are also found here, including AI-powered background removal, green screen keying, and dot cube lookup tables. ScreenFlow lets you easily add titles to your project with preset title templates or by adding individual text elements. The Annotations tab next to the Text tab allows you to add graphical elements to your titles. 
Animation of the elements on your timeline is accomplished through video actions, which can create a linear path between points. Or, using this checkbox, you can change the motion by adding gravity, spring dampening, or pulse effects. Callouts are another type of action that get their own tab in ScreenFlow. Callouts let you draw the viewer's attention to a specific area of the screen by enlarging it and darkening or blurring the rest of the screen. For this, you can draw a box with your mouse or draw a freehand mask in whatever shape you like. Set the amount of zoom, enter transition times in and out, and set the shadows or blurs to your liking. Once you've finished editing, you'll need to export your project in order to publish to your favorite streaming platform. Using the export command lets you automatically or manually configure your .move or mp4 output files. Or you can use the publish to function to push your media directly to your account on Vimeo, YouTube, Google, Dropbox, and other services. Batch Export allows you to queue multiple ScreenFlow projects for rendering to preset parameters. When it comes time to archive your project, you can use ScreenFlow's Archive command to save a little disk space. With Archive, you copy only the media that you actually need and delete unused items. We hope this overview of ScreenFlow 10 gets your creative juices flowing. There are a lot more resources available in the ScreenFlow Resources page.